With so many farmable characters in Marvel Strike Force, it can get overwhelming deciding which are the best characters to start farming. But in this video, we're going to make it easier for you counting down the best characters that you should start farming right now. And if you're ready to see which are the best, then you know what to do, Valley Club. Find that like button and let's go smash it. And welcome back to the Valley Vine channel. I am Valley Vine and I hope you're having a great day. In this video, we are counting down the best characters to farm in Marvel Strike Force today. This is who you should be farming if you're an endgame player. But if you're a newer or mid-game player, this is kind of a glimpse into what you should be working on in the future. But before before we get to this list, if this is your first time here on the channel, hit the subscribe button for more great Marvel Strike Force content and at least five Marvel Strike Force videos per week on the channel. We got countdown videos like this, gameplay videos, reveal videos, everything to help your experience in Marvel Strike Force. But let's start with this. Let's talk about the valuation of these characters. And for me, Arena is the most important game mode because that's where you're getting power cores. Then the raids, because that's something you're doing every single day. And you got some very good rewards in the raids as well. Then you got Crucible, very good rewards in Crucible, and then War, pretty good rewards in War. That's how I value these game modes, that that's how I'm going to value these characters. If you value these game modes a little different, you'll value these characters a little different. But before we get to this list, let's talk about who is not eligible, and that's all of these characters that you see here. Our non-permanent legendary characters, our Dark Dimension characters, and our fake Dark Dimension character in Apocalypse. We also have all of our non-farmable characters in Zombie Juggernaut. Our superior six are extreme X-Men and our hive mind characters. These characters are all not eligible and this list used to be very, very big. It is shrunk into this. Let's clear this off and talk about who is newly eligible for this list, who newly became farmable. And we have a few characters. We have our new Avenger characters in Tigra who recently became eligible or recently became farmable in Heroes Hard 2-3. Mockingbird recently became farmable in the Blitz store and Ronin recently became available in the Arena store. We had all of our Horseman characters become semi-permanent legendary. So for the purposes of this list, they are all eligible in Morgan Le Fay, Rogue, Red Hulk, Archangel, and then last but not least is our Pegasus characters recently became farmable dark hawk recently became farmable on hard hero 7 6 iron man infinity war in the crucible store and iron heart recently became farmable in the war store let's clear this off and start in with february 2024 starting at number 10 and recently became farmable is dark hawk newly on this list he is very very valuable as part of the pegasus team in the raids Pegasus is also a very good offense team in Crucible. They can take out teams like Gamma very, very easily. Not as good in defense in Cosmic Crucible, but they're also very good in war, war defense, war offense. This Pegasus team is very good, and Darkhawk is a very good character as well in this team. He's the energy battery of this team. Why is he so good? Well, he's got a few different moves that really, really help this team. Is one of his main moves is this passive though. You're getting more crit damage. The rest of the team is getting more crit damage, but when this character or a Pegasus ally uses their basic, you're gonna get an ability energy for everyone on the Pegasus team. So very, very strong passive. There's a strong ultimate as well. What the T4 does on the ultimate, gaining more damage per offense up on this character and gaining offense up for two turns on self and Pegasus allies on this big AUA attack. Very, very strong special as well. And as far as the best ISO 8 class for Dark Hawk, well, 95% of users on MarvelStrikeForce.com have radar attached to Dark Hawk, and Dark Hawk is available on Hard Heroes 7 6. But moving back to the list, another new character on the list this month is Morgan Le Fay, recently became a permanent or sort of a permanent legendary character. Very, very good in Cosmic Crucible, very good in War. And if you're still not through Dark Dimension 6, she does take Osmium, so that's a little downside to her. But if you do have her built up for Gear 18, she's going to give you a lot of value in the Legendary section of Dark Dimension 6. And her kit, very, very strong. Every single one of her moves has value. As far as the best T4s, though, the special has a lot of value. I would definitely do this special. Uh, you're going to reduce the speed bar for everybody, not only Morgan Le Fay, her team, but the enemies as well. They're going to just T4 is going to get speed up for two turns and immunity for Apocalypse Self and all Horsemen allies. This is going to help them get that speed back. The ultimate 30% extra crit chance, but also applying trauma and ability block to controller enemies. But this passive, very, very good because. Apocalypse and Horseman allies are going to gain more max health and more resistance as well. 
And Morgan Le Fay has a few different choices of ISO A class, but I think the most prevalent ISO A class for Morgan Le Fay is going to be Striker. Most of the game modes that you're going to use her on is going to be benefited by Striker. And like I said, you can get shards for Morgan Le Fay because she is a semi permanent legendary right now. And moving down one spot from last month is Val, the most important member of the Bifrost team. And Bifrost is probably the most important raid team because without Bifrost, well, you can't get through the Mystic section, which means you can't get through the Tech section for Pegasus. You can't get through the Mutant section for the Extreme X. I mean, you can't get to the Bio section for the Hive Mind. So Mystic section is the most important section because that's the first section. And Val is the most important member of the Bifrost team. So she gets the recognition here. But you're losing a lot of value outside of the raid with the Bifrost. They're not very great, good in uh, Cosmic Crucible. They're not very good in War. You do see them on defense, but they're very easily beaten by a bunch of different teams. So mainly the raids. And because Val has all additional value in Cosmic Crucible, she is getting the nod here. It's very, very good in Cosmic Crucible. But uh, Val is a good character. I wouldn't say she's a great character outside of her team, outside of the raids and outside of Dark Dimension. But what she does in that, I think, makes her uh, so valuable that she does have this spot at the eight. Now, where she gets her value is this ultimate here. Piercing damage, more piercing damage to all enemies, reviving two allies instead of one. And in raids and dark dimension, applying trauma to all enemies with this big move. This is a huge, huge ultimate in dark dimension and the raids. And she also has a very, very good... A passive as well when an enemy was exposed to attack generate ability energy for this character so yes her basic applies that i've uh, exposed and the passive with this t4 is going to generate ability energy for this character and in the raids when exposed character is attacked generate ability energy for four random bifrost characters as well not just val so very very important move she does a lot for this team, and I call Val a she because that's a skin I have on Val in the game, but you could call Val whatever. She's a non-binary character. You call her a she, a he, whatever. The most important ISO 8 class for Val is Striker. 80% of users on MarvelStrikeWords.com have Striker attached to Val, and where you could farm her? Well, you could farm her in the Incursion 6-9. Also dropping one spot from last month is Spider Weaver, coming in at number seven this month. Spider Weaver, very, very good character in Cosmic Crucible, very good in War, very good in any tower mode or any weird game mode that you might have. But uh, yeah, unlike a lot of the characters on this list, doesn't have any value in Arena and has very minimal value in the raids, mainly as a backup if your Bifrost dies. You can use Weaver and some other mystic characters in the raids, but mainly Cosmic Crucible is why she's on this list. The reason she is so valuable is because of her charge mechanic. Going all the way down to her passive here, this character or tangle web ally attacked and you're gaining an ability energy for this character and filling this character's speed bar by 10%. But where she's really gonna get the value is this. While this character has charge, lower accuracy by 100% for all enemies. And when the enemy misses, that's where you're gonna lose a charge. So very, very important. This ultimate T4, well, you're getting three charges instead of two. So having an additional charge is an additional miss that the enemy is gaining. And you're getting five charges in Cosmic Crucible instead of three. So yeah, this is a very important T4. Very, very good character. Mainly Cosmic Crucible, you're getting the value from uh, Spider Weaver. But the most important ISO 8 class for Spider Weaver, Striker. 72% of users on MarvelStrikeCourts.com have Striker attached to Spider Weaver and where you could farm her also in the incursion uh, campaigns. Incursion 3-7 is where you could get some shards as uh, Spider Weaver. And coming at number six this month was on this list previously, but was not on the list last month. So kind of newly on this list again is Rescue. You could argue that besides Kestrel, this is the most me important member of the Pegasus team. She has the revives, she has the heals, she has the barriers, she has the cleansing on this team. So Rescue, very important part of this team. If she dies in the raids or a crucible or a war, the team kind of falls apart. But yeah, rescue so important on this team. Let's see why she is so valuable. Well, like I said, she is the barrier of this team. She's the cleansing of this team. She's the healing of this team. She does so much in the raids and the death of any Pegasus fill speed bar by this character by 50% and generate three ability energy for itself. On spawn, you're getting more barrier as well. You're reviving a dead Pegasus ally with 60% max health with the T4 on the ultimate. So this is a very, very good move as well. This is a strong, strong special redistributing the health. You don't need a T4 on this, but this is a very important move. Deathproofs, deflect, 
clearing off the uh, negative effects of the uh, allies. Strong, strong move. Rescue is very, very good. Uh, you could get some shards for rescue in the Blitz store. And the most prevalent T4 class or ISO 8 class for rescue on MarvelStrikeForce.com. 78% of users have healer attached to rescue. Moving back to the list, coming to number five spot this month, no change from last month, is Gambit the most valuable member of the Extreme X-Men team? Very, very valuable in the raids, but because of the reworks, a problem in Cosmic Crucible, this Extreme X-Men team, huge problem in Cosmic Crucible, also a huge problem in War. And for Dark Dimension 6, you can bring in Gambit as part of of a uh, global section there and because of the counter attacks he does he's going to provide a lot of value in dark dimension six as well moving on to see why gambit is such a valuable character well that's a lot you have a zero turn cooldown on these specials so you can uh, choose whether you want to do a bigger single target attack with the basic or do uh, attack more enemies with the special strong strong ultimate big aoe attack on the ultimate but why is he so valuable? Well, at the end of any enemy turn, attack the most injured non-summon enemy, going taunt, stealth, 100%, uh, 180% piercing, applying heal block as well. Yeah, this is why he's such a problem when you face him and why he's such a value when you're using him. Uh, Gambit is a great character. And if you want to get some shards for Gambit, he's available in a Cosmic Crucible store right now. And the most prevalent ISO 8 class for Gambit is Raider. 76% of users on MarvelStrikeForce.com have Raider attached to Gambit. Moving on with the list, coming at number four spot, no change from last month as well, is Quicksilver. And Quicksilver is one of the first characters on this list today that has value in Arena. Use Quicksilver to counter one of the more prevalent defenses in Arena right now. Also, a great choice for Dark Dimension 6. Good for Cosmic Crucible defense, mainly using him on defense because he screws up the efficiency of your opponent. You can use him on offense or defense in war. Strong, strong character. Take a look at his kit, why he is so valuable. Well, he takes a lot of turns, and that's why he's great in Cosmic Crucible defense. Screws up your opponent's efficiency. Great for your efficiency, though. Strong, strong special or strong basic. Like disrupted on the basic. Clears charges with his specials, so very good move. This special big AOA attack on the ultimate, and yeah, this this passive does a lot on turn if charged. Fill speed bar herself by twenty percent, and on ally turn, always gaining a random positive effect. I think it's worth it to put this T four on. Big wall of text on the T4, so does a lot. And just like Gamut, you can get shards for Quicksilver in the Cosmic Crucible store. And the most prevalent uh, ISO 8 class for Quicksilver is Striker. 86% of users on MarvelStrikeForce.com have Striker attached to Quicksilver. Moving up on the list, coming in number three on this list is Kang, the Conqueror. Strong, strong character, is a great choice for diamonds and is great in Cosmic Crucible, great in War is a great choice for the cosmic section of Dark Dimension 6. Nova Trials, you're going to need him. He makes that such easy work. But yeah, Kang is a very, very good character. And he does that speed bar manipulation. So still is going to have a place in the meta for a long time. Taking a look at his kit, scrolling all the way down to his passive. On spawn, on offense, spell speed bar by self and all allies by 5%. That is what the T4 does for his passive. So very, very valuable passive t4 he has a big aoe attack on his ultimate clearing all barrier with a t4 clearing all death proof and applying defense down to all enemies and that makes this kang bang works even better huge huge uh damage on this move you want to get some shards for kang you can get him in the incursion campaigns three eight and you got a couple different iso eight classes for kang striker is the most prevalent on uh, MarvelStrikeForce.com, 79% of users have Striker attached to Kang, uh, but Raider is also a very good choice for Kang. 17% of users have Raider attached to Kang as well. Moving back to the list, talking about the Arena meta. Well, one of the characters that is in Arena meta right now is a Secret Defender, Miss Marvel Hardlight, coming in at number two spot again. She is very, very valuable in Arena, the protector of the Secret Defenders, also used in Dark Dimension 6, the city section, Cosmic Crucible, War, uh, probably not using an erase, but pretty much every other game mode, you are using Miss Marvel Hardlight. She's a great character, has a strong, strong taunt, and she has safeguard with her taunt as well. 
She has a big, strong uh, special here in Arena. Apply Safeguard to maximum two self-secret defender all allies. Put all Barret on the primary targets, doing more damage as well. Gaining Taunt as well. Flipping Taunt and gaining Taunt with her ultimate. And Arena also applying Safeguard as well. And the passive, very, very strong. On spawn, gaining 10% barrier. Armor for herself and Secret Defender allies. And 50% more max health in arena that will hopefully help her survive that apocalypse uh, empowered basic very very strong character useful in so many different game modes if you want to farm miss marvel hard light she is available in a raid store right now and the most prevalent iso 8 class for miss marvel hard light is skirmisher 86 percent of users on marvelstrikeforce.com have skirmisher attached to miss marvel hard light and it should be no surprise that the number one farmable character in the game is Ghost Rider Robbie Reyes, so valuable, just like Miss Marvel Hard Light, avail uh, valuable in Arena, Dark Dimension 6 City, Cosmic Crucible, War, everywhere but the raids you are using Ghost Rider Robbie Reyes, and he has a, such a strong kit, based all around bleeds. Taking a look at his passive, well, when a bleed is applied to an enemy, you're gonna fill the speed bar of Ghost Rider by 10%, the T4 also lowers resistance of bio enemies by 100%, lowering the counter chance for bio enemies with immunity by 100%. So very strong uh, passive T4, applying three bleeds to all enemies. And why is that so good? Again, because more speed bar for Ghost Rider Robbie Reyes in arena. You're bringing trauma to all enemies as well. Very strong kid. You have a very strong opening move with the ability block as well for Ghost Rider on his special. And uh, if you want to farm him, he's also been available in a crucial small supply store. Very worth it. Get your shards of Ghost Rider Robbie Reyes. And as far as the most prevalent ISO 8 class Raider, 87% of users on MarvelStrikeForce.com have Raider attached to Ghost Rider Robbie Reyes. As we talk about the honorable mentions, characters that I think you should farm, but just didn't quite make the top 10 list. Icarus, Cersei, very, very valuable eternal characters. Bifrost, Pegasus, and Cyclops. They're all very good characters to farm. Uh, Carnage, Venom, the Hive Mind characters as well. The Superior and Sinister Six going to give you valuable in War and Cosmic Crucible. The New Warriors, one of the best Cosmic Crucible teams out there. And the rest of the Horsemen and their teams, especially if you don't have Apocalypse Unlocked. That is a list. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Maybe there's some game modes that you value a little more than I did. Let me know your thoughts on this list and where you place these characters. And if this video did provide you some value, leave it a like. It is free for you and it tremendously helps out the channel. And if you want to check out what are the best characters to take to level 100 first, divided by origin trade, check out the video up there and I will see you guys next time. Have a great rest of your day. Hulk fist bump, Valley Flying out.